I believe one of the biggest lies that we've been fed in the world today, either directly or indirectly, uh, is that we've been led to think that the way we see the world to work is the way the world works. And that's just not true, right? What's up, everyone? Joe Moffy here with Master Life by Design. I'm excited for you all with another episode on the Millionaire Series. I got Josh Forty here. He is a powerhouse in the marketing space, the influencing space. Super excited to have him here. There's some really good announcements that he'll share at the uh, towards the end here that I, I can't wait for you guys all to hear about. Josh, thanks for being on the show. Welcome. Dude, thank you so much for having me. I'm super pumped about this. I uh, checked out your brand a little bit and kind of what you were about before we hopped on. I know we've been We've been friends for, I don't know how long for on Facebook, right? Uh, but uh, your stuff's awesome. And I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and chat. I appreciate it, man. I'm sure that you were kind of dissecting a little like, oh, you could do better here and maybe change <laughs> here. I'm not maybe that judgmental, man. Another time. <laughs> no, but, I look at what I can do better. You do some good, cool stuff. Yeah, we're all here just to help people, right? Like that's what we're all about. And so that's why I'm excited to have you here because you've been through a lot. You've seen a lot. You've helped a lot of people. So I really want to start to unpack that for people, kind of the impact you made. I, I've been watching you for a while on, through Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. You've been doing some incredible things. You've grown influence, like your in network, you've grown that huge. So why don't you share with the audience a little bit about where you, who you used to be, how you got to this point, and then we'll talk about where you're going from here. Yeah, awesome. I appreciate it. Um, for those listening... Uh, how many of you would love to be able to build your influence, not just in your your follower count, um, but also in your ability to just get in front of your ideal people, right? Like think about maybe there's top dogs in your industry, there's celebrities you want to get in front of or whatever, right? Having that level of influence. And then also how many of you want to like learn how to take that influence, take those relationships and monetize them? That is what I do. And that's what I want to show you or kind of share with you here today. Um, and I really want to come at this from the place of, I'm going to share with you some really cool stuff that we've done, but like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to brag. I'm not, it's not about me, right? It's just, it's about, it's about the ability to go out and what you can do. And I always answer the question of like, when people are like, Hey, tell me your backstory. Right. I go, well, let's start with this phrase, which is, I believe one of the biggest lies that we've been fed in the world today, either directly or indirectly, uh, is that we've been led to think that the way we see the world to work is the way the world works. And that's just not true, right? It is a way the world works, but it's not the way the world works, right? And so like the, where I grew up, I grew up on a farm. Uh, every single decision that we made was due to lack of money, right? Right. So, And I, I wouldn't say we were, it's not like we were homeless or like absolutely poor and never had money ever, but every single decision that we made, whether we, you know, we went, went a certain place or whatever came from, um, you know, a, a way of living where I traded time for dollars, where, you know, $12 an hour was awesome. If you made a hundred grand a year, you were balling. And if you made a million dollars over the course of your lifetime, like you made it. Right. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I tried to start a couple businesses while I was I mean, on the farm. They both failed. I dropped out of college, uh, halfway through the first semester, got in a big argument with my professor. And I was like, I hate this. I'm done. And kind of got into entrepreneurship. And um, the the long the long kind of story short of that is I got into the social media marketing space. It was um, you know several years of failures. I interned at radio stations. I I, tr I mean I tried so many different things until I finally kind of found the social media space. But really, I I will I will never forget the day that I made my first like super high ticket sale, which was like fifteen thousand dollars, right? I made fifteen grand in a day, which was over half of my entire annual salary in a single day. And then I got into, you know, the marketing world. I got into Russell Brunson's world, right? I know you're familiar with that man, right? And so I got into that world and I watched Russell Brunson, you know, make a million dollars in a day, right? And then a million dollars or $3.2 million in 90 minutes, right? And then, you know, you look at, you look at, you know, people like Elon Musk, who in 2021, he went and he made $144 billion in one year. For context, that is Bill Gates' entire net worth over his entire life in a single year. And like when you sit back and you think about that, you go, okay, wait a second. Maybe the world is different. Maybe there's some things I don't know that operate right that differently than what I know how to do, right? And so my whole life, and, and I, I always start with that to say like, my whole life has been the reason I've had any form of success 
Um, and success is relative, right? I've had my my version of success, right? We, we I've grown about 10 million followers on social media uh, for people. I had a podcast that we grew to about 1.5 million downloads. We've made probably t- t- well over $20 million for our clients online. Um, but that came from, oh, and all, all, by the way, all without running an ad, right? I've never wow. run paid advertising, right? And so wow. I did that or, or, you know, I was able to figure that out. And so were, you know, others that did that by understanding that the world operates differently than what we know. And by first asking myself the question of, okay, this is how I think the world works, but that guy over there did this. What, hmm, how do I do, how do I change my thinking, change my belief? And it's painful, right? I went through, I mean, so many struggles along the way. I, I lost my brother in a helicopter crash. I had, you know, my first, my first couple hundred grand I made, I, I, I peaked out. I was, you know, I was balling out as a, you know, 22 year old, right. Or t- 24 year old making a couple hundred grand and I blew it all. Right. Like I've, would fly first class different places and there was immense guilt, right? And of making money. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the highlight reel of of the different pit, uh, pit, uh, pits and peaks. Yeah, pits and peaks that, you know, I've kind of gone through. Um, yeah. But really where I've landed now and, and kind of how we got here is I've been very blessed to understand um, really the skill set and things around influence and how to leverage my skills, how to leverage my knowledge and myself as a brand to get in front of very successful and very wise people, build relationships and friendships with them and learn from them. Russell Brunson is a very, very good friend of mine. I, I hang out with him often. Brad Gibb, you know, he's my personal wealth coach. He's got charged like $25,000 a day to, to sit down with him. And we just like hang out all the time, right? And mm-hmm. the reason that that was possible was because of my ability to understand influence and and use that in a way that's like okay how do i use this in a way that's different than anybody else so that's kind of the the highlight reel we can dive into to any part of that but um yeah that's a little bit of a context that's awesome man that is so cool and a lot of you out there that are watching right you you are a high performer maybe you're working a high you know high paying nine to five you're an entrepreneur who feels handcuffed to your business and you're sitting there like how do I break free? How do I create yeah. that freedom? How do I do that? And so um, you just um, peel back a layer of like how influence is so key and how you can use that in networking. And because we all heard that old saying, right? Your net worth is in direct proportion to your network. So um, just so we could give that before we jump in, because I have one thing, a, a note here I took that I think the audience will absolutely love, but I always like to just share some, you know, some proof of concept, right? So you already shared that you had, what was, you grew your influence from zero on social media to what was the peak number? Um, we grew, at, at, I think we grew at about, about 10 million followers, not for myself, but for clients. Um, yeah, yeah. is what we had grown. And we had, a, we had a network of about 100 million at one point. That was not what we owned, but like that was what we had access to distribute on. We had like Kobe Bryant and Ronda Rousey and Usher, like people like that following our accounts. Um, yeah, so that was the peak, the peak. That doesn't happen just by throwing content out there, right? Like there's yeah. a specific strategy and strategies that you guys have. And so maybe we'll talk about that in the future, but from a marketing perspective, right? Um, sharing with audience, what is the most that you've ever made in a day? $252,000. Wow. How many of you out there, some of you that are listening are like, that's like two times my annual revenue, right? Or yeah. some of you are like, man, I wish I could even hit that. So in a year. And so 252K in a day. And what was the most you've made in the entire year? Oh, gosh. Um, revenue? Like probably 1.1? Million? Cool. Somewhere so around there, just over a million. Over a million in one year. So you're hit, you've hit seven figures. So everyone that's listening, if you're not hitting seven figures right now, you may want to pay attention. You may want to look at other people that have the credibility. Go for it. And can I imagine one thing on that? So I think in business, revenue is really deceiving because um, I, I actually... I do things differently. And I, I think it's probably in alignment with what you do as well, which is... I actually don't care about um, how much revenue I make. I mean, I I like look at it, I guess, every now and then, but like I optimize entirely and purely for profit because like I I personally, by the way, have not found the business that I want to scale to 10 or $20 million, right? And so I think that when you, when you sit back at, as entrepreneurs or what you're looking at, you have to know what business that you're in because I think a lot of entrepreneurs, 
have this goal of 10 or $20 million or $5 million or whatever it is, but they don't even know if that's the business that can get them there. They don't know if that's the one they want to scale. They don't even know what they're really after. And so for me, I've just known, especially for the last few years, um, that I, I don't know the business that I want to scale, but I have a really very valuable skill set that I can sell really well. And so like, you know, I made, I, I've made over a million dollars yet. I mean, I've made over multiple, you know, million dollars for myself. Yes. But like my margins on that, like at, at some points are like 70 and 80%. Whereas I know some people that are, you know, you know, doing a million dollars or two or $3 million or margins are 20%. Right. And so I, I would just encourage everyone as, as you sit back and you look at numbers, like I don't have the biggest numbers. Right. And I don't have the biggest, like, you know, things in a lot of areas. But if you look at the number that actually that I actually optimized for, and I'm not saying it's wrong to optimize for revenue, but that's not what I optimized for, right? I knew what I wanted out of life. I am married, right? My wife likes loves to travel. Uh, we're about to have our first kid. And uh, yeah, right, we're gonna have a little girl. It's gonna be amazing. And so when I stepped back and looked at my life, I went, okay, am I trying to go and win at the game of having a big revenue number? Or am I trying to go and you know set my target of, you know, I wanna take home 500 grand. Okay, cool. Well, you know, think about that. You make $2 million with margins of, of 20%. That's only 400,000 profit. And that's before taxes, right? Whereas I just went and I optimized for, you know, to make 500 grand. And the year I made, you know, I've, I, my income has gone from, you know, low six figures to high, high six figures, right? And everything in between. But like the year I made 500 grand, I think I only maybe made in the business, maybe like 750, right? So like, I just think I, I have this firm belief. Oh, and by the way, this is driven by your ability to influence people. This is driven by understanding how to get next to money, right? This is driven by this, this belief that, or this idea that the way we think the world works is not how the world works, right? Because when all of my friends or everyone around me was working a nine to five, they were making more money than me until my business took off. And then when my business took off, everybody around me that was building funnels and trying to impress Russell Brunson with marketing was making more money and was technically closer to Russell than I was, right? But they weren't friends with him. And then all of a sudden overnight, it seemed to them, it wasn't, right? But overnight, I'm best friends with Russell and nobody has any idea why, right? And then mm -hmm. when I get next to Russell, I never asked Russell for anything, but I get hundreds of thousands of dollars in business just because of proximity that I never paid for, right? And I know that's kind of on a tangent, but just my, my point with all of that is to say, know what you're optimizing for and understand what it is that you're really after and then just cut everything else, right? Just remove it and you will make so much more money. You will work so much less. Like I love working, don't get me wrong. I love working, but like I tallied up, I just told my uh, coaching student this. Uh, we have a, a little coaching group called Six Figure Paydays. We, you know, we teach people how to make a hundred grand in a day. Um, and they were like, you know, how much money you make last year? And so we, we were talking through it. I said, guys, I looked at my numbers and I made 80% of all of my money last year on like eight days. Wow. <laughs> right? It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah, that's such a big mindset shift. And I love that you said that, you know, people are trying to impress with their revenue number. And that's so true. People are just like, hey, look how much I made. And I always ask the question like you, but how much did you take home, right? Like, what is that? And most companies out there, the business owners, the CEOs I coach, like 20% profit margin is good, right? Yeah, 30, they're like happy with it. Smaller. But 70 to 80 is crazy. But where focus goes, energy flows, we know that. But when you optimize the right things, that's where you get to live the lifestyle that you have. And you don't have to go flaunt anything, right? Your results speak for themselves. But, you know, for everyone that's listening, if you're thinking about, oh, I got to start this business or I want to scale this business, you might want to look at what are your key performance indicators, right? And for you, Josh, it's like, hey, how do I optimize profitability? And a lot of people and, don't. Think that. And I just asked myself the question, you know, in optimizing for profitability, you know, I, I joked that, uh, you know, for most of my life, I haven't had a business, right? I've just had one really, really valuable skill set that I learned how to sell for outrageous amounts of money, right? And I've taken one skill set and, you know, the first time I sold it as an actual service, I sold it for five grand. And then that five grand went to 10 to 12, and then it went to 25, and then it went to 30, and then it went to 60. And then like the last time I sold it, like the largest package I ever sold was 100,000 plus backend, right? It's the same service, different customer, right? D positioned differently, packaged differently, but it's the same skill. 
And so when you actually think about what you want in life, I am not like, I tell people, they're like, you know, can you teach me about business? I'm like, not really. I can teach you about marketing. I can teach you about sales. I can teach you about influence. I can teach you about audience building, right? But like, you want me to teach you like how to run, like build business systems and what it takes to, I don't know any of that stuff, right? <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you know, Dan, do you know Dan Henry? Yeah. Yeah, so, right? Uh, all right. Old. Well, all right. He's, you know, he and I are pretty good friends. I'm actually going down there next week to hang out with him. And he's like, dude, I know people looking at all these numbers or whatever. He's like, I don't even look at it all. I was just like, how many dollars entered my bank account? And that is it, right? Like, that's what I look at, right? And so, you know, once again, just like you, a lot of people, I think we've been, entrepreneurship is great. It's amazing, right? But if we look at kind of the progression of, let's just say how households make money, not, not you know, just not, not how money's made, but just how households make money. You know, you rewind, it used to be you lived on a family farm or whatever, right? And then it was the family business. And then, you know, college came along. And, you know, in the 1900s, we had this big boom where companies started blowing up and, and you as the individual, the, the American dream was to go to college, get a job and, you know, work there for 40 years. And that was amazing. You made great money. You had a great life. And that was how the household income was made. And then, you know, in the early 2000s, you know, mid 2000s, we shifted to this, this entrepreneurship thing. And it's, you know, start your own small business, become this entrepreneur. And in the last decade, it's become really, really sexy to, you know, be an entrepreneur. But I'm like, oh, you, oh, mo most people have no idea what they're signing up for when they're going to go be an entrepreneur. They think, they think an entre entrepreneurship is about lavish lifestyles and high profit margins or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, that's not really what it is. And so I, I personally believe that the, the next wave, if you will, of small businesses or, or how household incomes will make money in a lifestyle fashion or in any form of freedom fashion, they will have business principles, but really what it will be is it will just be personal brands, right? And I'm not talking like massive influence. I'm not talking like social media influencers. I'm just talking about you yourself as a brand that has a skill set, right? And because of your influence in a market and your ability to solve a problem, people will come to you not because you ran an ad. I've never run one, right? They will come to you because you're awesome at what you do and because of the brand that you carry, your presence, how you show up powerfully, the, the, the values that you stand for, and you will have influence over those people. So once again, a little tangent there, but. No, it's so good. So powerful. And in the beginning, you were sharing like how you took that one skill for a lot of people out there that they don't know what that one skill is. What, what advice would you give them to discovering that or identifying that? What would you say? It's a great it's question. Tough. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a really good one though. And, you know, um, I'm going to answer with a quick story on this. You know, I'm, I'm a Russell Brunson boy, right? I got to, I got to tell a story, but like guys, like I grew up, I mean, I, you know, I'll just tell you, Joe, I grew up on a farm, right. In the middle of nowhere where my nearest neighbor was a half mile away. I was homeschooled. I didn't have, you know, a, a cell phone that with texting until I was 18 years old with dial up internet. Right. I had no skills when it, I didn't have connections. I did not have money. I didn't come from any of that. And so when you go and you enter into a marketplace, when, when I got started with things, I just, I just went in just with this deep desire to learn. And I went, okay, my goal is to make money. And what's shocking to me is I was not afraid to admit that. And so I just thought everybody wanted to make money. But like, I feel like so many people that I meet, they're like, afraid to admit to themselves that they want to make money or that money is their primary purpose, right? And so they go try to learn some skill set that isn't directly correlated to making money. Let me tell you something. If you can make other people money, I guarantee you, you will make unlimited amounts of money in your life, right? Dude. And so what I did, huh? That's good. Right? That's really so I just looked at it and I was like, okay, how do I go and make money? And I spent, you know, I spent two years, because I had nobody, you know, I've got no, you guys got people like Joe that are literally just giving you the path, which is incredible, right? But I just was like, okay, if my goal is to make money, what skill sets do people pay lots of money to, right? That was the question. I'm like, okay, well, if I just get near the money, right? I bet you I could probably get some of that money. I don't know how, but I bet you, you know, I could. And so like the first skill set I learned was sales. And people were always like, well, uh, what would I sell? And I'm like, I had no idea what I was going to sell, but let me tell you, if you can sell things, there is always something to sell. And there's always someone that will come to you and be like, oh, I will pay you money if you can sell this for me. Right. And so that, that kind of that story of like, I went through two years of struggle to figure that out. But once I figured out that, okay, there's lots and lots and lots of money in the world. And, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to a guy like Russell Brunson is like 
a hundred bucks to me or maybe a thousand bucks to me, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I'd spend a thousand bucks, if, but a hundred thousand, that's life-changing. What skills would those types of people have, right? What, what do they need? And so my, my advice to this would be to find your marketplace, right? Figure out the marketplace that you're gonna play in. For me, that was the ClickFunnels and the online marketing world, right? That's where, I, that's where I decided to build my first empire, if you will, right? It was like my levels of influence in the ClickFunnels world are very, very high compared to any other world, right? So I picked my market and then I went, okay, what's the skill, right? What skill does this play marketplace need? And can I tell you a little secret, guys? Are you ready for this? You want to know like the secret to making crazy amounts of money and like the secret that nobody will tell you? Most people just are willing to do the work. Like most so people just good. aren't willing to go and learn how to do it. It's not even that revolutionary. And I would get caught up so many times in my life where I'd be like, it can't possibly be that simple. If it were that simple, why isn't everybody doing it? And I'm like, oh, it's because everybody's thinking exactly how I'm thinking right now. And we're just not willing to sit down and suck, right? So that would be my advice is understand, you know, Garrett White says this on stage at, at Funnel Hacking. He's like, understand that no matter what you're going to do, you're going to suck. You're going to suck super, super bad. And then you're going to do it more times and you're going to suck less. But he, and eventually you'll do it so many times that you'll stop sucking. So good. So yeah. good. So true, man. Like I've seen it in my own life play out. Um, but I always say like the Pareto principle, 80, 20, right? Like anything in life, 80%. Yeah, it's great. But there's a 20% suck factor, especially when you're getting started. I love that one quote Alex Ramosi put, he said, you can get good enough at almost anything in 20 hours of focused effort. The problem is most people spend years delaying the first hour. Like they crazy. don't right? Like, it's dude, how like, long, let me just ask you, how long did it take you to get into real estate before you got, like, you're, cause you're in real estate, right? We'll yeah. So how, how, long, how long did it take you to go and get into real estate? Like from the time you kn knew about real estate to the time you got your first deal, how long did that take you? Since we came out here, it probably took like, honestly, just searching and putting in offers about a year for us. A year. We're in a it. year. Yeah. Yeah. So Brad Gibb, my mentor on real estate, right? This dude is like the smartest person I've ever met in my life. It took him from the time he knew that he needed to buy real estate to the time he bought his first one, 40 months. Because he just delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. He bought his first deal. Guess what? Like two years later, he had a million dollars in real estate, never used a penny of his own money, had like nine properties or something like that. More. 40 months to get one. And then two years. If he would have just started, right? He would have been that much more. Now, thankfully, you know, he, he continues. But you're absolutely right, dude. It's like, and I do this all the time. It's like, I know I need to get in the gym or I know I need to, you know, build this webinar. And it's like, delay, 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 delay till the last possible second because every single story in your head tells you you're going to fail, right? And there's all these self-conscious efforts of like, oh my gosh, it can't possibly be this easy. If it was, why am I this? And there's this self, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, it's oh, like, yeah. it's crazy. And so, yeah, 100%. Like, if, if, if you want to go get a skill set, just figure out your market, figure out like, what, what are people willing to pay for, right? Like, I'll just tell you in, in the online marketing space, there's three buckets, right? That you can choose from in the online marketing space. Number one is offers. Number two is sales conversion processes. How do you turn leads into customers and now ultimately sell them your offer? And three is traffic. Those are your three buckets. Now, technically there's a fourth that's like systems, right? Like to run the business, but I don't know, I don't know that. That's not marketing. So I don't know it, right? That's, that's, that's running that. businesses, right? Those are your three buckets. Pick one mm -hmm. and then go find a solution. Dude, so many people right now need traffic. They cannot figure out the traffic game, right? Hey, I, I know people that spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month trying to get traffic. Like, like, like not like it's nothing, right? Sales conversion processes. Build a sales team. Build webinars. That's what we do, right? We build five day challenges and workshops. That's how we make our, all, most of my money in the last two years have come from just selling that one skill of four hour workshops and five day challenges. That's it, right? And people pay outrageous amounts of money for it because they know they'll make outrageous money. So that would yeah. be my answer. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I always share with clients all the time, like they, when they're like, hey, what do I what do I do? Like I'm, I'm working this business or, you know, I, I'm not making the money I want. It's like one of the components is hard work, right? Hard slash smart work, I always like to say, right? Like we don't want to, you know, I can't be, I'm not wired like Alex Ramosi who would wake up. Yeah. <laughs> that's just not me. I like yeah, the leverage, same. that's me personally. But you also got what you were saying and what I hear you saying is, you got to pick a vehicle that can produce the income that you want, right? Like you're mm. never going to win, you know, in a Honda Civic, if you're, you know, racing like Lamborghinis or something like that, you'll never, you got to pick a vehicle that allows you to capitalize and one that's unlimited income. 
you know, obviously what you're sharing, everything you're sharing is unlimited income, but most people, they pick something where they get capped and, or they've been forced into it. They didn't actually choose, right? Like you said, like sometimes people come from building a family business and like, they just take that. And it's like, that vehicle can be capped. So what is it that you love to do that you can capitalize? And I also, I'm a big fan on like, it fulfills you. It makes an impact also because nothing worse than putting your time, energy yeah. and effort, you make a bunch of money and you're totally unfulfilled, right? And you're not yeah. even contributing back to society, right? In any way, obviously what you're doing is super powerful. You're like, you're giving people the ability to unlock money at any given rate and actually have a formula for that. And that's, I mm -hmm. love stuff like that. It's so, so powerful. Um, I love the fact that you said like, you knew you, you wanted to make money. You wanted to make a lot of money, right? And you just went to go find a problem. I, I find that a lot of people, like you said, are very challenged with admitting that because of whatever social stigma out there. And so for you, like, I, obviously I hear you, I, I see your stuff. You're afraid to talk about money hmm. what is the belief that you have around money that might be able to help someone that's listening who has a true deep desire but they're afraid of looking a certain way amongst their peers or society or whatever like what's your belief around money it's a great question um can i tell a quick context can i just address something Wait. real quick that you just said um <laughs> you know as far as like finding your vehicle and stuff so i have this concept that i um have Played around with and like worked on for a while that i share with my students that it can be very helpful for people which is um it's called the freedom to think um and you know when i got started so i moved out of my parents house uh, i was 21 i think at the time i was super broke i was making 540 dollars a week um i was you know tr working as, as much as i possibly could trying to figure out stuff online you know have my business and, you know, every I would drive Uber on the weekends to like four o'clock in the morning just to save up a little bit of extra money. I would I would go to Goodwill and buy stuff. And then I would go to, to Facebook Marketplace and try to, you know, ten dollar, twenty dollar profit margins. You know, I was just trying as much as I possibly could to, to save. Um, and I remember my car broke down and I had to go and it was like, I don't know, something with the brakes or something on the front. Right. And it was going to be like twelve hundred bucks or something like this to fix. And like, it just drained my savings, right? $1,200. And I, I remember I, I got my paycheck. I, I paid all my bills for the month, my rent, my, you know, everything like that. And then I, you know, I paid off, you know, the car things or whatever. I had like $54 left. And like, I'm living in this $500 a month apartment, probably not even, right? With a, my window of my car duct tape shut and I'm laying on the bed, like on a Saturday morning. And I just like, remember just like bawling, like just like crying like crazy and just being like, how do I get out of this? Right? Like, what, how did I, like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Right. And like, when you're in that moment and when things are frustrating, and I, I've been trying, like I've been putting in so much effort to go and learn. It's not like I was sitting around playing video games, right? This is a year into what, what, what turned out to be three years of locking myself in a room and just like working. And I'm a year into this. Right. And so, um, you know, long story short, like, in that moment that I think, I've, you know, I've always admitted to myself that I wanted to go and make money, but I remember sitting there and being like, I there's like, this can't be life. This cannot be like how I'm supposed to live and contribute to the world. Like I have plans and I have dreams and I have goals and like, I'm going to go figure this out. But that, that just that deep pit of despair, like drove me. I will never forget how I felt that day ever. And that's probably a big reason that I feel driven to never go back to that, right? Because I felt hopeless and I felt like, like being broke sucks. It sucks really bad, right? And so my beliefs around money and, and, and my beliefs around like skill sets and things of that is coming back to this, this idea of the freedom to think is I did not even have the freedom to breathe in that moment, right? And so anything that I desired, anything that I was trying, you know, thought that I was going to change the world with in that moment was so completely skewed. and. When I made my first $10,000, it was shortly after that, maybe three or four months is when I had that first, you know, $15,000 in a day, right? For the first time in my life, I felt like I could breathe, right? And then when I went and fast forward, like six, you know, not six years, probably three, you know, three years later or so, and I had my first, not that I made my first 100000 but I got my first $100,000 in the bank, right? Like I had $100,000 of liquid cash that I could go and, you know, this, for the first time, 
like I felt like I had the freedom to think, mm. right? And I could I could think long term enough now to where you know I, I was with Sam Ovens. I don't know if you know Sam, but I was in his mastermind, right? And he was talking this with this guy about it, and this guy was like, you know, I have all these big goals and dreams and blah blah blah. And Sam's like, well, why don't you go build them? He's like, well, I don't have the cash the capital. He's like, well, how much do you have? And the guy's like, like sixty days worth of cash. And Sam looked at him. You could hear a pin drop in the room, right? And Sam was like bro, if I had less than a million dollars of liquid cash in my bank account, I would literally freak out. He said, you don't even have the freedom to think until you have a hundred grand. And that concept, like, as I thought back to when I had that hundred grand, that concept of, okay, I have a hundred grand in the bank. If I don't work for six months, I can still pay my bills. Whoa. I can now think six months, a year, two, three years into the future and actually create something good because you can't create anything good. You can't create anything sustainable and long-term when you're just, when you're in scarcity. And so my, my target to people is, or my message to people with this is, if you are one of the few lucky ones, and I thought I was, by the way, I'm not, right? One of the few lucky ones that knows what you want to do with your life, that knows the skill set that you have that you want to scale to millions of dollars, that knows their purpose, that knows their vision or dream, amazing, go chase that. But if the rest of you, for the rest of us, for those of you that are like me, that didn't know what that is, or you don't know what it is, and you're just like, I just don't want to be broke. Right. <laughs> I would encourage you to rather than trying to optimize for bi some big long term vision of millions of dollars or some big company or some pipe dream that you think you might have, you're going to change it a million times. Just go get a hundred grand. That makes sense. Because then you have the freedom to think. Then you have the freedom to go and buy a piece of real estate for the first time and see what that's like. Then you've got to, you know, the ability to go and hire a coach. Right. Then you have the ability to go and like actually make decisions not based on selling your time anymore. Does that, does that make sense? So good. That is so good. I remember that uh, being in that same position too, just 40 grand in debt, making less than two grand a month. At one point, no money coming in and eating cheese and ketchup sandwiches, living with six other people it was miserable. I personally, in that moment, as you're sharing that story, like for me, I was at that same point. I was like, God, what, what am I doing? Yeah. What am I, like, why am I here? And um, I think this could be a good segue, like the top talk about because one thing I admire about you is like your your faith but how you bring your faith into everything you do even into business in some points and for me my faith is big like believe you know we both believe in Jesus Christ and so but like how does your faith sustain you in business and and how does that make an impact for what you're doing and where you're going because I I know what it has for me but this isn't about me it's about you so how's it work for you mm. man yeah, I I love Jesus, man. I love <laughs> Jesus. Um, he's he's awesome. Um, not just awesome, he's the king of kings. So I grew up in a pretty Christian home. Um, very, very strict though. Very um, you know, mom, if you're listening, I love you, right? Like it, it was cult like, right? Um, and that's not not necessarily bad. A click funnels, I think, is a cult, and I love click funnels, right? So, but it was just it was very, it was a very small world, very strict. And, um, so I ended up, I, you know, when I moved out, I ended up leaving, um, the church. Um, I didn't leave God, you know, I never like, was like, God doesn't exist or, you know, I'm but like, I was just like, I'm done with the church. I'm done with the rules. I'm done with people telling me that, you know, I'm going to hell cause I got a tattoo or something. Right. Like, I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me. And so I chased money. I, I did. I, that was the goal. I thought money would solve my problems. Um, I grew up without it. And so I was like, you know, my dad was, you know, my dad drove a truck and was gone for oftentimes like three or four months at a time. We wouldn't see him because he would just be trying to provide for the family. Right. And, um, I was like, well, if I had money, you know, if we had money, our life would have been a lot better. So I'm going to go chase money. Um, spoiler alert, <laughs> it didn't work. Right. But, but, um, it wasn't until about four years ago, my brother actually passed away in a helicopter crash. Um, my, my older brother, um, he was married, you know, um, and had, a son, his wife was actually pregnant at the time. And in, in the business, we were probably doing like 70, 80 grand. I think, I think we had done like 70 or 80 grand, like the month that he died. Right. Um, is what we had done. And I, I shut down the business. I actually just exited from my, my, I just gave it to basically an equity partner. Um, they, they wrote me a check for, you know, something kind of, cause we had a relationship once again, influence, right. Um, cause it wasn't, it wasn't really cause it worth, was worth it. Um, but my wife and I went around the world. And, um, I was just like, I gotta, I gotta figure out what, where am I at with all of this? This doesn't make any sense. And you know, kind of my whole worldview is just shattered. I just wanted hundred million dollars and now my brother's dead. And I'm like, yikes, wait, what? Mm, okay. And so we were overseas. We, we had traveled, we had, you know, planned to go to like 20 different countries or something like that. And, um, while we were over there, we started to like, just kind of go to some different churches and, you know, some different areas. 
And um, I, I started to like rekindle my relationship with God. It wasn't like, it wasn't like full blown yet, but then we were over in the Philippines and my wife gets sick with an intestinal eating parasite. And she is so sick. I'm like, we're, and by the way, we're like, we're in the Philippines, take a plane to an island and then take a propeller plane to a dirt runway island. When you land, you can like see through the airport because it's a little building. Then take like a four hour bus ride to the middle of nowhere. Like that's how secluded we are. And she gets sick with an intestinal eating parasite. We take her, she can't sit up. She can't move. She's got 104 degree fever. We take her to the emergency room and the emergency room bed is a piece of plywood. There's ants crawling up the wall. There's no toilet seats on the toilet. The doctor walks in with flip flops and they're like, we're going to give her this needle. And I'm like, wait, like, like I'm freaking out, right? Like I'm like, how did we get here? And so long story short, I ended up buying plane tickets home. It was like $10,000 a flight because we had to have first class because she couldn't sit up. She had to lay down, right? So like international flights across the world, we get back. And so in a year, I go from making, you know, basically a million dollar a year business and, you know, on top of the world to brother dies, wife is sick with an intestinal eating parasite, no income for six months, and then a 20 grand expense. I had prepaid for the whole entire trip for another two months, which was like another 20 grand. And we didn't get any refunds, right? Because we you know, did with the discount. Like in a matter of like three days, I lost $40,000. And I end up in the basement of my wife's mom's house at Christmas. And you go, all right, God, how the frick did we get here? Right? And you know, in that moment, and I think about this, like I am, I'm skilled. I've got results. We've grown millions of followers. We've made millions of dollars at this point for people. Like what, how do we get there? And, you know, I won't go into to too much of the details. I, I, I did end up hiring a coach. She, she was the most transformative person I've ever hired. Um, but that experience led me back to God because in that place, I figured out who I was. I had to learn who Josh Forty was. And so when people ask me like, who is Josh Forty? I mean, the, the number one thing before anything else is I'm a child of God saved by him right? Josh Forty, that's who I am. Child of God saved by him, right? I'm powerful. I'm influential. I'm wealthy. I'm free, right? But first, I'm a child of God saved by him, right? And when I had that understanding of that I was a child of God, I was like, okay, cool. Here's the firm foundation. Go all the way to the pit, Go like literally all the way down, right? And I'm like, okay, let's build back from here. And then in that process, I saw, and I'm, I'm almost done with this, I promise, but uh, in that process, when I was like, yes, I believe in God, I believe in God. Then I started seeing all of these people that also claimed God. And I was like, that's not, what, how do you, how do you say you believe in God? I'm like you believe in God and you believe in God and you, and I'm like, wait a second, hold on. I don't just believe in God. I believe in a very specific God. I believe in the God and the God of the Bible, which says that he sent his son, Jesus Christ to have a personal relationship with us, right? And so when people tell me they believe in God, I go, okay, cool. Do you believe in God or do you believe in Jesus? Because if you believe in God, that's great. I, I appreciate the fact that you have spirituality or some form of religion in your life, right? I serve Jesus, right? I follow Jesus Christ because that is like, that is actually the God of the Bible, right? That is actually who died for my sins. And so in, in my influence, in my business, I'm not a Christian business, right? I don't just serve Christians, right? But it is impossible for me. And I get, I get a lot of hate because they're like, oh, Josh, you're all about money or you're all about influence or you, you, know, you want to tell people it's okay to live rich and all that. I'm like, well, yes, actually, I do believe those things. And maybe I need to change my messaging a little bit or whatever, but I have no problem with making lots of money and having lots of influence. I think it's a good thing. We should use it for good, right? But like how I, like why I lead and, and, and wrap Christ into my life is because like God was this foundation and like Christ was actually who it actually was, was Christ. He saved me. He is my everything. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I'll follow him to the ends of the earth, period, end of story. And I personally have found that when I actually follow his principles, when I actually study what the Bible says about money, the shocking thing happens. I make more of it. It's crazy, right? It's insane. And like, there's this lie. I think we've just been fed of like, oh, like it's somehow good to be poor. It's not morally bad to be poor, right? It's not bad. But it's also not good. You can be rich and go to heaven. I know it's hard, but like if you go put Christ first and I just go, the, why I am able to have success in my life is I look at what biblical principles are about money and influence and what God said, right? And that's what I follow. And so if people have a problem with that, cool. I don't care. I don't, right? Like I have picked my side. I have chosen my, my, my I, I know there's a war going on and I have chosen my side and that, that side is Jesus. And if people have a problem with that, so be it. So good, man. So yeah. good. 
So I'm, I'm so I selfishly asked that question for everyone. So if you didn't resonate, uh, I apologize. Not really, but I, I want to get <laughs> your perspective. So I love. And by that. the way, yeah, it just, just ten no. seconds on that. If if you if you don't believe in Jesus, amazing. Like that's fine, right? We're not here to, to judge you or to condemn you. Or, like love you. I would just I would encourage you to do this. Be like, if you think you have a better alternative, amazing. But make sure you actually go and study him. Like, make sure you actually go check out Jesus. If you want to talk about Jesus, you can hit me up on Messenger or Instagram, whatever. Hey, I'll, I'll happily like, talk to you about Jesus. Yeah. Same here. And it's like, and this is a question, you know, and this kind of ties into success and 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 faith, right? It's like, we're always talking about like, well, what's the fruit that's being produced by who you follow, right? Like, is there evidence? Is there fruitfulness in what you're doing on your path, right? And if there's not, you may want to check out and say, you know, hey, the one that's the most fruitful of or in all time, right? Jesus, but... Um, you know, I, I'll share just a quick moment of what you said. I don't, I think it, it's apparent in the Bible, God wants you to be prosperous. He's had people be wealthy in the Bible, right? Like he came to life, give you life more abundantly, right? Like that doesn't just mean in love. That doesn't just mean in relationship. It means in all areas, right? But I had a problem on my journey when I was suffering. I was like, God, what's going on? I made money my idol. Like I worship mm, yeah. all I thought about. I thought about that more than my faith, my belief in Christ. And so I realized like I was, I was out of alignment with the Bible. And I was wondering why was it my life winning at that season of life? Like I was struggling, like, like you, man, I was given plasma for like 50 bucks each week, just to kind of get food. And Crazy so what was, we do, bro. What is Crazy. that? Yeah. It's like, what was it? And I was like, I was putting everything else in this material world, right? Like, I love Jerry Savelle. He always says, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world, right? Yep. And I was putting everything in this world first and foremost, but him. And when I shifted that formula, right? Like there's business formulas, right? Of how you influence. When I shifted that for me and followed those biblical principles, things started unfolding, right? I went from 40 grand in debt to, you know, I'm having $40,000 plus months, right? Things shifted. Now, Hear us clearly. I think we could. I could speak for both of us. Just because you follow Christ doesn't mean you're going to yeah. be a millionaire, right? Like that's prosperity the- gospel is garbage, you guys. Like, I yeah. do not believe in prosperity gospel in any way, shape, or form. Like, come on, the- I, I saw your post, so go for it. Let loose, real like, quick. bro, dude. I see these people, and listen, some of these people are my friends, right? And and I I believe they're skilled at, at what they do, but like these people out there that that preach that if you follow Jesus, that you know God wants you to be rich. No. I actually don't believe that God wants you to be rich. No, that's that's not true. I believe that God wants you to follow biblical principles. And I believe that God wants you to be financially healthy. I believe that God wants you to be smart with your money. I believe that God wants you to take care of what he's given you, right? But like I tell, you know, my my mom and I, and I love my mom to death. I have an amazing relationship with my mom, right? But, you know, and my mom and I, you know, argue about different things in, in a healthy, fun, we have a great relationship, right? I'm like, mom, you have to understand my message is not for everyone. My message is for those that are driven. My message that is for those that they feel they have been called to make outrageous amounts of money and have a massive impact on the world, right? If that's not you, my message isn't for you, right? Now, do I think you should still go? If you're a man and you have a family, do I think that it is your moral responsibility to take care of your family financially? 100%, I do, right? But does that mean making millions of dollars? No, right? However, if you have been called to win in the game of money and influence and entrepreneurship, as I have, as you have, right? If you have been called to that, follow what the Bible says about it, right? If you haven't been called to win there, if you've been called to go be a pianist, or you've been called to go be a missionary, or you've been called to work in a soup kitchen, or you've been called to, to live on a farm and build whatever it is, follow what God says about that, right? But like prosperity gospel, this idea that if you follow Christ, you will be rich and wealthy is garbage, right? Nowhere does he promise that. In fact, he promises almost the opposite, which is if you follow him, you will encounter hardships. You will encounter hatred, right? I personally believe as we look at the Bible, as we look at the world today, guys, like, you know, people are like, oh, you're all about money, Josh. I'm like, you know, a million, like, let me ask you, I ask Christians this a lot. I go, is six figures a lot of money to you? Like, is that gluttonous? Is that, is that too much money? Right. And they're like, no, no, six figures is okay. That's good or whatever. I was like, cool. Okay. How about a million? And they're like, well, that's, I don't know who needs that amount of money. I'm like, okay, did you know that a million dollars today has the buying power of like six figures, like 20 years ago? Oh, oh, wait a second. So. So just because the number got bigger, you you have a problem with it, right? But I'm like, but it's the same buying power, right? Did you know that the last in the last two years of our life, 40% of all US dollars have been printed? 40%, right? And so like these people, we have this, such misconceptions about money. We have such misconceptions about influence. We think that it's somehow unethical to make a lot of money or that we're screwing people with a lot of money. Or my favorite one, 
which is if you talk about money, that somehow you're encouraging people to love money. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. So going back to that, that one question you had, and, and then I'll start back to you with, was, I didn't get to answer it actually, is like, what are my beliefs about money, right? Different beliefs about money that I hold, right? I do not believe money is good. I do not believe money is bad. I believe money is inherently neutral, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe that in the game of entrepreneurship, I don't know the other games, so maybe this is different for other people, but at least the game of entrepreneurship for us, for those of us that are building business, that the economics of what we do involve money and involve this transfer and exchange of goods. I believe that money is a reflection of the amount of value and measuring stick that we have contributed to the world today and in a sustainable way, right? I do. And so when you understand and look at money as a tool and you look at it and you go, okay, it's not good, it's not bad, it's not good or bad for me to have a lot of it, as long as I first look at how I'm using my, or how I'm making my money, what I'm using my money for, the volume or level of money is simply the amount of impact that I'm going to have as long as I use it correctly. I highly believe in tithing. I highly believe in charity. I highly believe in going out there and being very generous in your personal life. I also believe in the business world. We're here to run a business. And so my belief about money says this, if you want to grow at outrageous rates, if you want to be forced to look yourself in the mirror every single day and level up, if you want to be forced to grow with the biggest challenges in the world and become the absolute best version of yourself in every single capacity, go figure out how to make outrageous amounts of money really, really ethically by solving real problems for real people and providing real value to the world. Because if you do that, you will have problems that no other human being can possibly face or understand. And when you figure out those, it's just like next level never ends come on man so good guys i'm so excited that josh came on and we get to touch on this topic again a little selfish here but no that's so good right and it's all about value most people don't understand that right like god wants our heart he doesn't it's not it, he's not after every you know taking everything from us he wants our heart right and that's the biggest thing for me and and i'll, I'll share real quick one quick resource if people are looking for it, like when Josh talks about Bible secrets, like this is a great book to touch on that, you know, uh, business secrets from the Bible. It's like, follow the principles. God's a principle guided God, right? Like yeah. that's, just, that's how it goes. And so if you want a formula, not to say like you're unlocking this prosperity and the like prosperity gospel. Right, no, right yeah, there, you're not. But if you follow that and add value to people and you're coming, your heart is pure in that process. It's like, no one can now give God. Right. Here's I'll share this and then we can move yeah, on. That's good. Yeah. So the, the, the thing that most people worship in this world is money. Right. And the the true not not the true value of money is not like the paper that we get. It's like the original source was gold. Right. Gold and silver. And it's so funny. The thing that we value the most gold as the highest value on this earth is God says that in heaven, the streets are paved with gold. That's actually the lowest part of heaven. So what we value most is actually the lowest thing in mm. heaven. And it's so good. It's just God. I could go on a rant forever, but I'm that's, just that's awesome. Yeah. So good stuff, man. I love that. And I, I appreciate your view on money. And I hopefully someone in here, you've just got unlocked from that, or maybe even handcuffs have been taken off and unopened for you because so much of us, we learn about what the media says, what the world says. I say, go look and see what the Bible says. Uh, and I was going to say like, Oh, just right on that note, it's like you've been lied to about every single thing else in your life by the media and by the world. Yeah. All of it. And yeah. I don't even have to get political, right? Like I'm just talking in general, right? So why do would you think that the most corrupt, you know, the, the thing that people envy and crave the most, the thing that God says is, is the, the love of it, not it, but the love of it being the root of all evil. You don't, you don't think they might have lied to you about that? And like the original reason that a currency or that a money, or that money was created way, like way back in the day, even like if you go back to Bible times is it was the ability to transfer value to store and transfer value through time and space. I know I'm getting like super political or super scientific in there, but if you actually think about that, it's like, if I have an apple and you have chickens, right? I could have 10,000 apples and you could have 10,000 chickens. But if I want, you know, a house, if I want a house on some wood and they don't want apples, then we need some universal exchange of currency, right? And so money became this reflection of being able to trade value through time, right? So over time, it holds its value and space, meaning between me and you, I can hand it to you, I can transfer it, right? And so when you think of it, it is a store of value through time and space, then money is a reflection of value. And as long as you're doing it ethically, lots of unethical ways to make money, right? This is why inherently gambling, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, gambling being evil, right? Being wrong. Now, 
I, you know, I play blackjack for five bucks every now and then, right? But that's different, right? I'm talking like actual gambling, right? Because you, you're, you make that money and you're not actually providing real value to the world. It's just luck, right? And so like when money is made ethically, when you're using it for good, when you are not, it is good, but when you're using it for good, when you have a healthy relationship with money, when it is not the focus, uh, life changes. And I will tell you, uh, I became a lot, I had a lot healthier relationship with money once I had it and learned how to have a relationship with it than when I didn't have it. Because when I was broke, when I was in scarcity, I, I hung on to every single dollar that I possibly could and never wanted to give it away in any capacity. Once I had money and I was like, okay, let me change my relationship with it. You know, it, it changed. So uh, my, my last my last thought on money conversation, we can move to the next topic, is just understand that uh, if, if you want to have a healthy relationship with money or just have money in general, I highly, 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 and very strongly encourage you to go get a coach. Go get someone that understands money. Uh, I did not figure out this money game by myself. I learned how to make money from Russell Brunson. I learned how to have a relationship with money, how to store it, how to invest it in what, but from Brad. I did not figure this stuff out on my own. I surrounded myself with very wise and successful people because when I tried to do it on my own, every you know couple hundred grand I made, I would just blow it. So if you wanna have a healthy relationship with money and you wanna go out there and have wealth, long-term wealth, uh, go talk to smart people that know what to do with money for sure. Oh, good. I love that. I love what you said, man. Like if you study money and what it truly is, it, it doesn't have to have power over you. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. you can literally unlock so much there. So um, you touched on some point, let's move on, but, and we'll wrap up here and shortly. Um, I saw recently you've been diving into real estate, right. And learning, yep. like you say you had a coach, Brad's been helping you steward money. Right. And so Tell us a little bit about your journey around real estate investing. What's the mindset? Because I'm, I'm a big believer that business is a great way to accelerate income, but uh, real estate is a great vehicle to accelerate over time your wealth and yeah. generating wealth, right? So why jump into real estate? What was the mindset shift for you there? Yep. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the, the brief story on that, and I, I want to be very clear. I want to set this, the, the record straight. I actually made a post about this. So I, I personally am in, in getting into real estate and, and in real estate, but like, I don't have a business in real estate. I don't teach real estate. I don't, you know, like real estate is not my business. I have a business in marketing and the income game and the skills game. And like, that's what I do best because like, I love the income game. Dude, I bought, we just closed on a property on Friday of last week and we got another one coming up in like a week or two. Dude, it's, it's so boring. Real estate <laughs> is so boring. It's so boring, dude. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't know how anybody does this. So I, I love the fact, like real estate's great, right? But I'm like, I need something way more exciting. That's why I love my business, right? But the the story goes that, you know, I never got real estate because people would tell me, you know, you can make $300 a month on a, a cash flowing house. And then eventually someday it'll be paid off and it'll go to a thousand or something, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, I can pull $300 out of a homeless man. Like what, you know what I'm saying? Like not beating him up. Like I could literally help, I could partner with him and we could go make 300 bucks. Like I don't get it, right? I don't understand what the sexiness about, it seems slow to me. It seems, I don't get how people are making money. And so at the end of last year, um, actually I shut down my, my coaching business. I had a seven figure coaching business and um, I, I, I shut it down. I felt, I felt God was calling on my life. He said, shut it down. And it made no sense. We had just done a big launch um, and you know, six figure launch or whatever. It was like, shut it down and, and, and move on to the next thing. And I didn't really know what that was. I thought it was going to be an AI and crypto because I'm a big crypto nerd too. Like I like Bitcoin and um, so I, I shut down the company. It's, it's complicated to shut down a company, man. It's like it takes a while. Oh my gosh. I finally get it shut down and I do what I just encouraged you to do. I was like, I got to go get around smart people. And so I called Brad, um, and he's, you know, a good friend of mine now. And Brad's very, very, very wealthy, right? Like he understands me better than just, this has been his whole world. His whole life has just been studying money. Right. And so I fly out to his house. He had just built his brand new, like 12,000 square foot house. It's got a tunnel underneath the ground, like a full out tunnel, like to this 2,500 square foot guest house that's out there that his in-laws live in so the kids can walk back and forth. I mean, it's just like insane, right? And like you walk into this house, the door's like, I think it's like 14 feet or something like that tall, right? This big metal door, you open up and he's got this big countertop. And so we walk in and I just spent two days with him. And, um, you know, he allowed me to just kind of hang out and we chatted because we're friends. I did, I did a little bit of work while I was there and stuff, but... When I was getting ready to leave, we we sat down at the the kitchen table or the dining room massive island thing, right? And uh, he's working on he's working on some project or whatever. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, we got this real estate deal we developed, blah blah blah, and all that. And I'm like, well, tell me about it. I'm like, might as well learn, right? And he goes, well, yeah. So we're developing this deal. It's going to be seven million dollars is what it's going to cost. Uh, you know, we got money from the investors. It'll appraise at ten million once it's all built and all of that. Um, and so I'm just you know I'm putting together all the paperwork, or whatever. And I'm like. 
okay, well, $3 million. Okay. Well, I was like, how much money do you put in? He's like, well, none. I didn't, you know, I didn't do any money on it. I'm like, okay, so how much do you own? He's like, like 35%. And I'm like, wait, what? Hold on. What? I'm like, what's your risk? Like, what? He goes, I don't have any risk as long as I don't commit fraud. I'm we're, we're good. And I'm like, hold on. If I'm doing math in my head here correctly, dude, you just told me that this is going to be worth $10 million when it's done next year. You put in no money. You own 30. You just printed $3.5 million. He's like, yeah, it's pretty great, right? And I'm like, whoa, hold on. Stop. What? what, what? Right? Like, I don't understand that. And so he, we, you know, we, he explained, it, you know, explained to me debt for the first time in my life uh, for about two hours. And like, I'd heard people talk about debt and debt's the currency of the wealthy and blah, 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 blah. But like for the first time, it was like all the lights came on, all of them, right? And I like look around the world, my brain like physically hurts. And so I have to like fly home. And for the next week, like every time I was hanging out with my wife for the whole next week, I'm like reading books. I'm like, babe, you don't understand. She's like, you gotta chill out, right? Like it's not that big of a deal. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like it literally, everything that I have known about money and wealth, all of it is wrong, right? All of it. And she's like, okay, whatever. And so I called Brad and I was like, you got to teach me this. And he's like, no. I'm like, what? Bro, we're friends. Like, what do you mean? No. And he's like, I just don't have, dude, I run three companies. I've got six kids. I'm involved in my, I don't have time. And so I called him or texted him like every day for a week. Right. And I was like, I was annoying him. I'm like, you, like you have just shown me something that like, I don't. I don't understand how that was done, but like, I need to know. And so I went and worked out a deal with him to where I I used my marketing skills. This is, you know, JV influent type of stuff to where we threw an event 15 or for 15 people. We sold tickets for like five grand. uh, And we had 15 people fly out to his house. He's got this big home office or whatever. And for two days, he taught us about real estate. And the, the, the saying that he said that changed my perception of real estate forever. And it's, you know, I'm going to ruin it because you know, there's no setup or context here. But for those that know, you'll know, you'll know, Joe, right? Is it was like, I actually don't care about the real estate. I don't like real estate. It's like, mm-hmm. I just want the debt. The debt is the asset. And real estate is the single best vehicle for buying debt. And like, once he said that, and once I understood what he meant by that, right? I was like, I'm in, I'm good forever. Let's go. And so I went out and like, you know, 60 days later, I had, you know, found two investors. I'd raised money. We bought a couple of deals. We've got uh, two deals now, third one closing. And then a fourth one will close in like a month and a half or so. So I have four houses. Um, but my journey into real estate was I realized that if I just set it up now, I still keep my income game. I'm not trying to go get into real estate, but if I just set up the things now and I keep time on my side and I use debt, like I am buying wealth in the future and I'd never have to do anything. And it's not $300 a month. It's all, you know, it's, you know, all the pieces. So if you have the desire to get into the real estate game as a business, great. Um, That's not where the money's made, by the way, you can be in real estate and not be an investor. Like you actually have to invest. Um, But once I understood that concept, I suddenly for the first time in my future felt like, okay, my future is going to be secure no matter what, even if I mess up everything, right? So I'm going to go and keep making as much money as I possibly can over here in my business. I'm going to keep doing marketing. I'm going to keep doing influence and all that. And then I'm going to take all of that money and I'm going to go just dump it into real estate. Well, whole life insurance first and then and then real estate. Big believer in that. That's a whole right? other topic we could dive Yeah, a whole other topic, right? But put it into that. And so I believe, yeah, I, I do believe real estate is because of the debt. Um, when you actually understand the world of it, it's like, you have been lied to. I have been lied to my whole life. So I'm very happy to do. I'm incredibly grateful for people like you that are trying to get the message of, of this out to the world, because like, this is what's going to set good people free and their families for generational wealth for sure. So good, man. So good. Oh man. I feel like we could talk for hours. Um, yeah. I want to be able to have the audience have something practical. And so you're really good at influence. So what's one tip that if people are sitting here like, man, I want to be able to have the influence you have, what's one thing that they can do that would give their influence game kind of like a a booster and how they are out there networking or connecting with people. What's one thing they could do? It's a great question. There's so many pieces of this. Um, So it's funny. I actually call this the Jesus framework (laughs) Um, because it's like when I actually discovered it, it was, you know, about influence and and about messaging, building your message or whatnot. And I was like, is this really how it works? I was like, well, let me see if it works on Jesus. And so then I look and apply to Jesus. I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what Jesus did. This is awesome. (laughs) Right. Um, And so 
the 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 story that goes, and I'll, I'll make it quick for the sake of time. But I'm sitting at dinner, um, actually not too long ago on this, and there's this lady sitting next to me, very good at what she does, like very very um, like smart and like connects billionaires with deals, and she's a real estate and capital connector, like just very very like connected in all of this. And so we got talking about this whole influence game or whatever, and um, she hands me her phone and she goes, well, like, cause I was like, well, you know, it's all about looking cool online, right? Looking cool, LOL, right? She's like, and she hands me her phone. And she goes, do I look cool online? And like, I looked down at her socials and I was like, looked at her and I was like, you know, I'm not trying to be rude here, but you, I mean, you asked. And I was like, I am looking at this and I have no idea what you do. And I just sat down with you for 20 minutes and you blew my mind and none of that's here, right? Mm -hmm. And she goes, uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she goes, we should talk. And so we we hop on a Zoom call and she essentially asked me a similar question to, to what you just did there or whatever, right? Was like, where do I start? Like, what, what do I do with this? And I go, well, the first thing that I would have you do before anything else, before you're going to figure out, um, you know, what platforms you're going to use or, you know, how you're going to show up, what content you're going to create or, or whatever is, I, I would ask you, what's your thing? What is the message that you want to give to the world, right? And so the message, the framework, if you will, for the world is um, who what, why, and how, okay? And so I'll apply this to Jesus for a second. The who is, who Who are you trying to attract and serve? Like, who who is who are your people? And I at first I was like, well, Jesus came to save everybody. And I was like, oh my gosh, no, he didn't. Like literally in the Bible, Jesus literally says, I did not come to save the healthy and those that are, you know, that are well. I came to save the sick, the broken, and the lost, right? Like he was very specific on this. He went to those people, right? And I was like, okay, well, that checks that box. So like who? And so like for me, I'm like, okay, entrepreneurs. And like, I want to serve, uh, you know, a leader, attractive-based, uh, uh, character-based entrepreneurs that have this message I want to bring to the world, right? And then it was like, what? Like, what do you help them do? Or what is your message to them, right? So if you have a business, if you're coming at this from like a direct response marketing element of things, this would be, what do you help them do, right? If you are coming at this from like a you know a podcast branding or something like that, it would be like, what is your message? So like my message to people, right? If I'm doing a podcast content episode is like, you can be free, right? Like you can be free. That's my message. That's what I want you to know. Russell Brunson's is your one funnel away, right? Like that's his message to the, you know, to the world. Or in my business, right? It's I help people have what? I help them do, make $100,000 in a day. So like, who are you serving? What do you help them do? And then uh, why, which is why do you do this? Right. And so this is the meaning behind it all. This is like the, the why behind it. And, you know, for me, I have my story. You kind of, you know, shared on that for the sake of time. I won't go into that. But like, you know, why I do this is because of, you know, I believe that if, you know, you can go out and have, you know, wealthy entrepreneurs you know, out there that are, you know, doing stuff for good. And then how? What is your vehicle? What is your framework? What is your method? Right. What's your new opportunity? What, what is, what are the steps? What are the processes to actually go out to go and achieve this? Right. And if you can get those four things in place to where they're very, very simple right? Like, like, do not complicate these things. They, they should be, I mean, mine is you can be free, right? Like just simple, right? If you can get these things very simple and very clear, this lays the foundation for you to build your brand and your influence on top of, right? Because now every single thing that you do, whether you're doing a podcast interview like this, right? Whether you're creating content for yourself, whether you're doing sales calls, whether you're writing emails, no matter, or, or interacting with people, whatever it is, you can just think back to who am I talking to? Oh, okay, I'm talking to like, okay, cool. And what, where, where's the outcome I'm trying to get them? And why are we doing this? Because that's where people are gonna connect emotionally. And then here are the steps. Everything just comes back to that thing. And so my, my tactical advice to you would be that, would be figure out what I call the Jesus framework, right? Oh, let me finish it. So sick, broken, and lost, right? What does he do to them? What his message to them is you can have eternal life, right? His message to them. Why? Why did why do we have eternal life? Because God so loved the world that he saved his only or sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, right? Why? Because Jesus and God loves us. And then what how? Well, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, right? There's the framework. One, two, three, four, right? And so that was this message. Jesus Christ is the most influential person in the entire world, right? To ever walk the earth, Jesus Christ, right? He used this framework, he used this method. And so if you do this correctly, you can go and you can get in front of people. Because most people just don't know this, right? They don't know these simple things. And so when I was targeting the people like the Russell Brunsons of the world, my what was I wanted to be around highly influential people, right? Or I mean, my who, right? And so like, I was very clear about that. And so when I was like, what? Like, what was my message to them? Or what was the idea behind them was, I want nothing from you, right? That was my internally, I want nothing from you. I don't have anything to pitch you. I don't want to have anything to sell you. I am here to just make your life better. How can I make your life better, right? And then why? Well, because I've believed that 
me, I was like, if I get around ultra successful people, if I have proximity to those people, I don't need anything from them. I will learn so much and be introduced to so many opportunities just by proximity. That, that's good. That's, there's, that's why, right? And I, I didn't have those opportunities when I was young, right? And then how did I do that? Well, there was different vehicles to that. But for me, it was creating content and creating an environment. I started a podcast that created an environment that was very, very unique that they would want to come on. And so everybody else would interview marketers and ask them about marketing. And I would get out and interview marketers and I would ask them about God and I would ask them about their family and I would ask them about if they've ever, you know, I don't know if they've ever done drugs, right? Or if they've, you know, what was the lowest point in their life? Like I would ask them these crazy unique questions, right? That nobody else was asking. And so the first time Russell Brunson and I connected and I promise I'm done here, right? Is he actually reached out to me and he was like, hey, like I've got this podcast. I've been trying you know, get Russell's attention for whatever. He reaches out to me and he goes, hey dude, can I come on your podcast and talk about Atlas Shrugged? And he flew me out to Boise. We sat down for three and a half hours in his office at 8.30 at night for three and a half hours. And we talked about Atlas Shrugged. Who's doing that? I remember right? that podcast. It was amazing, right? It was one of the coolest experiences of my life at the time, right? But why? Because, because I knew who I was after. I knew why I, I knew like what my message was to them. I want nothing from you. Everybody else does. I don't, genuinely. I've never asked Russell Brunson for anything, right? but I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of that relationship just because of proximity. That my friends is influenced by the way. That is what influence is. It's not the amount of followers you have. It's not the amount of people that like your, your stuff, right? It's not about how much, it is about using your ability, using your message, using your influence to get in front of the people that you wanna get in front of so that you can either change their life or yours or both. That's influence. And like, I believe that if more good people Christians or just ethical people in general understood that game. They understood how to go and understand the pillars of influence, understand how to use this to get what they want. You can make unlimited amounts of money. And not only that, we could change the world because now we would be influencing all of the top leaders in the world. There's my, well, there's my tactical you're thing on for fire, you. fire, baby. I love it. I know you got a commitment here soon, but um, you hit something around podcasts. And so I know you're make you're creating a new podcast coming out. And so can you just take about a minute or so to talk about yeah. that? Because I think people after watching this, they need to hear more about what you got to offer. So tell us a little bit about your podcast, uh, The Game of Influence. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you uh, willing to let me do this. So you know, I, I had my podcast called Think Different Theory. We did about 360 episodes, 367, I think. Um, Apple actually sued me for trademark infringement. Um, and so we, that's why we ended up shutting it down. That, that was the one that got 1.5 million downloads. And so we did a brief rebrand just to like make them happy. Um, but I shut that down almost two years ago and um, we're bringing it back. And there's a whole story behind that. You can go actually check it out. The, the teaser episode it just dropped and, um, you know, is out to kind of give you the uh, the backstory on that. But the, the name of the podcast is called The Game of Influence. And this is a long form content podcast. These are, you know, one to two hour interviews, oftentimes with influential people understanding the game um, and teaching the skills of influence. And the goal is to, to create a world, to create a place where people can come to truly understand what it means to be influential and use that influence for good. And then in the process of that, um, you know, learn how to make lots of money the right way. Uh, and so that they can go out and, you know, change the world for the better, become the best version of themselves. And so if you go, I'm, you know, you'll link it down in the show notes or whatever, you can go to my website, josh40.com. That's J-O-S-H-F-O-R-T-I.com. Um, you know, there'll be a button there. You can join the wait list for the launch. You can check out the current episodes and all that. But uh, that'll be coming out sometime in the next month or two. I'm not sure when this will drop, but in the next month or two or so. Um, and uh, Brunson will be coming back on. We got some really cool names, um, you know, coming right. up on that. We'll have to have you on at some point. It'll be awesome. Um, but all about the, the game of influence there. So we'd love for you awesome. to check it out. And uh, just know that I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. I believe in you. Like, I, I genuinely believe if you're an entrepreneur, I believe in you, right? I, I, I believe that you can change the world. I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you. I, I understand what it means and the struggles that, it, that entrepreneurs go through. So if I can serve you, if I can help you, like, please let me know. Um, that's what I'm here for. Love it. And if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way? Um, you can either uh, DM me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, that, that, or you can send an email to Josh at Josh 40.com. Okay. Either way. Awesome. Yep. Well, Josh, I appreciate you jumping on everyone today was fire. Absolutely crushed it, man. I appreciate it that we could go for hours more. Um, it's just, you're just one of those guys, just full power, full of energy that just knows his stuff and can deliver. So, um, thank you for being on. Appreciate it. Absolutely, um, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. And so for everyone, make sure as we wrap up here, Hey, hit that like button.
make sure that you also subscribe, hit that notification button. And also I'm going to throw this out there, just a special offer, just because Josh is here. Um, for those of you that are like, look, I need some help. I need influence or I need, you know, coach to help me through some of the challenges I'm going through, reach out to us. And if you decide that you're going to join, if you can show us that you subscribe to Josh's uh, new podcast, we'll give you a discount on your coaching just on top of wow. that. It's just, I want to do that everyone. So go give him a like or subscribe, hit that. And then we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you get the discount. So with that, thank you for being on the millionaire series and watch it guys, make sure you subscribe and we'll catch you on the next millionaire series. I'm Joe Moffitt with master life by design. All right, guys, have a good one. See ya.